Would you believe it if I told you he's the only Savior? Would you believe if I told you there is no other Savior coming? Amen. Amen. Well, this is a good place. Rick blesses my heart. I mean, I, I love to hear him saying, Ship Ahoy. How many of you hear Rick Young saying, Ship Ahoy? Would you like to hear Rick Young saying, Ship Ahoy this morning? Come on, Rick. Amen. He don't need music, I don't think, does he? No. Rick don't need music. You listen to these. Amen. That's number, what is that number? I think it's number two. Or two. I was drifting on life's pitiless sea when an angry wave threatened my ruin to be. When away at my side, there I dimly described. Was a stately old vessel, and loudly I cried, Ship ahoy, ship ahoy, and loudly I cried, ship Was the old ship of Zion, the sailing along, all aboard her seemed joyous. I heard their sweet song, and the captain's kind ear, ever ready to hear, caught my wail of distress. As I cried out in Jesus, 
Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Shout and sing on your way. Jesus saves. Glory to God. Amen. Send that microphone so hot like I can't hardly touch it. I better put that up. Well, do you remember the day when he lowered the, the little boat and took you on board? I remember that day. David, David Epps, will tell us how he did it. Well, what a blessing. I sure want to thank you for your kindness. Yeah. Um, folks around here have been so good to me. Uh, amen. And I appreciate the privilege of being here. Me and my wife will be leaving uh, after the morning service. We're going back home. And then Thursday, if you'll pray for me, I'll be, uh, if the Lord permits, I'll be in Spartanburg, South Carolina in a penitentiary. Yeah. <laughs> and some of y'all look like you headed that way yourself. Amen. <laughs> I'll be working with this fellas I work with. We'll be in a prison there for three days. You pray for us, Lord, to keep his hand on us and protect us. And uh, hey Amen. I've been doing this for 21 years. I've never, I've never been harmed. I've never been, I'll be honest, I've never been afraid. Maybe I haven't got enough sense to, to know. Uh, uh, amen. Sometimes it seems like you kind of forget where you're at. But uh, I, I believe that's what the Lord had me to do. And uh, he's never let me down. I've never... Never done without what I needed. I don't believe the Lord will send you somewhere and not provide for you to get there and get back. I just don't believe that. And some folks struggle with that all the time. I have no sad stories to tell you. God's been good to me through his people. And this church has been very kind to me, uh, not just this week for, I don't know, now on probably 17, 18 years. I'm, I'm not sure exactly the number of years. I just appreciate all the hospitality that I've been showed here. I want you to look this morning right quick and I'll truly try to be brief and let the man of God that's been come so long, such a long way from, I think, Houston, Texas. Uh, amen, that's a long way. Praise God, amen. And uh, I've heard him preach on tape and uh, get the privilege this morning to hear him in person. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to put these two together. Uh, First Samuel 17. But while you're looking there, I want you to hold your finger there, 1 Samuel 17. I want you to look in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, read a few verses, and see if I can tie this thought together uh, this morning and make some sense out of what I've been thinking about. Uh, and uh, I hope this is the right. It's good to have a good message, but it's really good to have it at the right time. And uh, I hope this is the right time and the right message. Kind of like medicine. Medicine's good if you take it at the right time. Yeah, amen. Boy, if you get it confused and take it at the wrong time, you'd be sicker than you was before you took it. Yeah. I hope that ain't the way this works out. <laughs> Here, I'm just going to read try to put this together, and I, 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 I believe this is what the Lord had me to say this morning. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 5. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our, uh, were our example to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat, drink, and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of the serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and was destroyed uh, of the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for an example, Amen. and they are written for our admonition, Amen. 
upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There have no temptation taken you but such as common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. But with uh, the temptation also make a way uh, to escape that you may be able to bear it. Uh, amen. I, I, and then I want you to look back here in uh, 1 Samuel 17. Here we read a few verses and try to give you these few thoughts this morning. See if the Lord will help us. Uh, now, some of these words, you might pronounce them better than me. You probably don't know how to pronounce them either. We do the best we can with them. Amen. That's right. I don't know about you. Some of them, uh, I get hung up on them. He said here in verse 1, Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together in that word there, which belongs to Judah uh, between that same word again and those two other words. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched in the valley of Eli and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain uh, on the one side and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had a helmet of brass up on his head and he was armed with a coat of mail and the weight of his coat was 5,000 shekels of brass and he had uh, greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his spearhead weighed 600 shekels of iron and one bearing a shield went before him and he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array. Am not I a Philistine, and ye the servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you, uh, for you, and let him come down to meet me. And you look over in verse 51, and we'll try to scan over these things real quick here. Verse 51 here, uh, when things is all said and done uh, by this loud mouth Philistine, Amen. And that's what they are. Yeah, I don't know how am I doing right there. Yeah. Amen. And he said, Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of his sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Lord, we ask you, please, in the lovely name of Jesus Christ, you'd help us, Lord, not be nervous or intimidated. But Lord, you give us liberty of the Holy Spirit and boldness to preach that we might be a help this morning to those that's here and please unto thee in Christ's name, amen and amen. Uh, we know the story here how uh, Saul and the armies of Israel and the Philistine armies, uh, they were gathered to battle and uh, David, just a little lad of a boy, uh, a young teenager, uh, amen at the time, uh, he went down on order, by order of his own father to check on his brothers. And this Philistine was going up and down and running his mouth about yeah. what he's going to do yeah. uh, to the to Israelites. And he told them to choose out of a man. Yeah. And he said uh, and to battle with him. And David uh, said, uh, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Yeah. And you know the story how David went down in a brook Amen. You know, a brook runs through a valley. Amen. And he went down into the brook in the valley and he reached down and got five smooth stones out of that brook. The reason they smooth, they'd been, the water had been running over them and knocked the rough edges out of them. Amen. And the Bible said that he put them in his sling. Amen. He put them in his, the bag and then he reached his hand down in there and got one of them. Uh, five, that's the number of grace. Hey, one of them could have done the job. Yeah. Amen, amen. And he reached down in there and got one of them, put it in his sling and sling it. Amen. Yeah. Now, if you're from the south, you know what that is. If you're from up here, it's sling it. Amen. Uh, amen. But the truth of the matter is, you know, uh, uh, he put that in there and he ran towards that John and hit him in the head with that uh, stone. Uh, Amen. And then he took that giant sword and cut his head off. Amen. 
Hey, man, he wouldn't hardly fit in on TBN too much nowadays, you know, and some of these religious charlatans, they couldn't handle old David about how you're supposed to just be kind and love everybody. He took the bloody hand of that John, went dancing down the street, singing, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful, hey, man? I, hey, I mean, we live in a place now you can't hardly say nothing without being, uh, being politically correct. Somebody wants to sue you, hey, man? Uh, but he knew what to do with this Philistine. Hey, you know, here he cut his head off. He slew him and cut his head off. Uh, just a simple little thought this morning on what caused the giant to fall. He's a giant of a man. I've looked up to a lot of good men, and old, old, uh, old Goliath wasn't a good man. He was a Philistine. But I, I've looked up to a lot of good men that I've had way up here, and I greatly respected uh, but something's happened to them that they're not up there like I used to have them. They let something happen in their life that, hey man, they're still saved on their way to heaven, uh, but they failed. Hey, what caused the giant to fall? Uh, first of all, this morning, uh, uh, he was an uncircumcised Philistine. Uh, uncircumcised flesh uh, will cause you to fall. Uh, hey man, it speaks of separation. Uh, it's a mark of separation. Uh, be not unequal yoked together with the unbeliever. For what fellowship have rights with unright? What communion have light with darkness? Uh, what concord of Christ with Bala? What part of the heathen believe with an infidel? Uh, what agreement have the temple of God with idols? For you're the temple of living God. For God said, I dwell in them and walk in them. Be their God. Wherefore come out from amongst them. Be a separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing I, and I receive you I should be a father you should be my sons and daughters saith the Lord Almighty having therefore these promises dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God uh, Romans 12 1 and 2 Paul said I beseech you thou poor brother by the mercies of God you present your bodies uh, a living sacrifice holy except unto God which is your reasonable Lord. be not conformed to this world uh, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, we're to come out from amongst them. Uh, we're to separate ourselves from them. Uh, if you don't separate yourself from the world, uh, you will fall. You'll not be able to be used to the Lord. Uh, uncircumcised flesh uh, is what causes people to fall. Uh, amen. Folks don't like you to preach on that. Uh, Amen. Uh, uh, amen. Uh, you say, preacher, I don't like that. Uh, that's all right. I ain't preaching to come back. Uh, I'm just a preaching. Amen. I believe God wants us to come out from amongst the world. Amen. On the outside and on the inside. Amen. That's right. Uh, I tell you, there's some preachers down home I wouldn't go uh, as far as I could spit to listen to them. Uh, running around in a little pair of shorts. Uh, can you imagine seeing me in a pair of shorts? My legs look like they've been dipped. Clorox got purple knots all over. Can you imagine me running around like that? How am I doing right there? Hey Amen. I got, hey Amen. Anybody want to testify right here? Hey Amen. Uncircumcised flesh. Hey Amen. Uh, I, amen. When God saves somebody, He takes them in just like they are. I, Come unto me, all ye labor heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly heart. Shall find rest for your soul. I, he takes you in like you are. I, does the work on the inside. I, then start taking the word of God. And He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, pastors, teachers for the perfect of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith, under the knowledge of the Son of God, under a perfect man, uh, under the measure of the statue of the force of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the sleet of men, by the cunning crater, whereby the lion waited to the sea. God gave the gifts to the church. Uh, there's no apostles, no prophets, uh, except false apostles, false prophets. Uh, that which is perfect is calm. Uh, 66 books of the Bible. Uh, he he said not to forsake the assembly I set together as the manner of some is, uh, exalting one another, even so much more as we say the day approaching. Uh, we live in a day now, they, they are, some churches got signs, uh, uh, come as you are and leave as you came, because uh, there ain't nothing there to change them. Uh, I saw a church sign the other day, uh, this is a church for folks who don't like church. Uh, can you imagine being so brain dead uh, that you'd go to something like that? Yeah. Amen, well, hallelujah. They done give me my love offering, so I'm just going to unload the whole wagon before I leave. Amen. 
I'm telling you, this is the fleshiest outfit I've ever seen. You can't go to Walmart nowadays without putting mule blinders on. Hey, man, that's right. Hey, yeah, that's right. Hey, man, these little old boys, why these baggy breeches down around their knees, got a logging chain hanging out of their nose, hubcap in their ear, decals all over the body, and get up and sing, oh, how I love Jesus. I got news for you, neighbor. If you got the Holy Ghost in you, you believe this Bible, God to change all that in your life. Well, sure he will. Hey, man. Uh, these women wear these hip hugger breeches. Most of them got more hip than things to hug. Hey, man. I'm telling you, God help us in the day we live. This ain't much camp meeting preacher, but this is the last bullet I got. Hey, man. Uh, hallelujah. Hey. I'm amazed at uh, some of those uh, breeches. Have you ever see them Pillsbury Doughboy biscuit rolls? You get out of the refrigerator and you go, Poof, and they go, poof. Uh, that's the way some of these clothesy people are. How am I doing right there? That got a real hip right there. Amen. And God wants us to come out from amongst them. Be a shepherd. He said, what? No, you're not. At your temple of God. Amen. Temple of God's holy. Which temple you are. God wants us to get, let the Holy Spirit take his word and clean it up. On the inside and on the outside. Let all bitterness, wrath, and anger, and clamor, evil speaking, be put away from you all. Malice be you kind one another, tender hearted, forgive one another. God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. It's not just the outside, but it's that stuff on the inside. Amen. Follow peace with all men in holiness, without which no man should see the Lord. Look in diligence, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defied. You can look pretty good on the outside and have bitterness on the inside and an unforgiving spirit. Amen. I don't really know which one's worse. Amen. Being messed up on the outside or messed up on the inside. I'll tell you what. Well, anyway, so much for that point. Point number two. Amen. I'm talking about he is uncircumcised flesh. That will cause you to fall. Amen. And then, uh, not just uncircumcised flesh, but he underestimated the power of of the enemy. When he went to face David, David just small compared to this giant of a man, almost 10 foot tall. Uh, hey Amen. Uh, uh, he underestimated the power uh, of the enemy. The uh, Bible said, Be sober, be vigilant, be ever serve the devil as the roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Sometimes folks underestimate the power of the enemy. I've heard some of these preachers get up and act like God. Uh, they get up on Monday morning uh, and say, I rebuke you, Satan, and like he runs off like a whoop pup somewhere. Yeah. I got news for you, neighbor. Yeah. Amen. I'd rather be like that little old coney. Uh, just a little feeble folk over in Proverbs. Uh, amen. He don't have no large teeth, no claws, uh, but he don't go too far from the rock. Uh, yeah. Amen. He don't go too far from that little old burrow uh, where he finds safety. I found out don't get too far from the rock. Uh, upon this rock I'll build my church uh, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. I found out just be there on Sunday morning. Uh, be there on Sunday night. Be there on Wednesday. Be there for the special me. Whatever problem you got, God can help you get victory over the enemy. Amen. Amen. I ain't no match for a, a roaring lion. You can hear him eight miles away when he roars at night. His feet are padded and you can't hear him coming. He can leap in one bounce 40 feet. He can run 35 to 45 miles an hour. And he's the king of the jungle. And we live in his domain. But I know somebody can handle him. Hey, David said, I come in the name of the Lord. Hey, yeah. I think John 15, Jesus said, I'm the true vine. My father's a husband. Every branch in me that bear not fruit, he taketh away. Every branch in me that bear fruit, he purges it, that it bring forth more fruit. Now you're clean through the word which I spoke to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. I'm the vine, you the vine. The branch of he that abide in me and I in him, the same shall go forth and bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Hey, man, without him, I, I'm no match for the devil. I try not to look him up. Amen. 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 But I do like to do enough for him to try to look me up every now and then. Yeah. Hey, Amen. I'm not looking forward to it, but I tell you, really, one reason you don't bother some people, they're going the same direction he is. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Hey, Amen. I'll tell you what, uh, folks act like he's afraid of them. These, these shysters, that's what I call them, these religious charlatans, you know, that want to send you a free book for a gift of 50 bucks. 
and then talk about living by faith and said you could put it on your credit card at 29% compounded interest. That's not faith, that's stupidity. Amen. Well, anyway, how am I doing right here? Hey, what caused him to fall is uncircumcised flesh. He underestimated the power of the enemy. Hey, uh, he had an unguarded mind. That's where old David planted that stone. <laughs> Amen, an unguarded mind. Uh, Amen, I think over in Isaiah 26, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Uh, Psalms 1 said, Blessed is a man that, uh, 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 that uh, walketh not in the counsel of ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, or sit in the seat of the scornful, but his light is in the law of the Lord, and his law doesn't meditate day and night. It should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. It shall bring forth his fruit in his season, leaves all sorts of not wither. And whatsoever he doth, he shall prosper. Amen. Yeah, yeah, man, you got to fill your mind for the right stuff. Amen. 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 You can't watch this trash on TV all the time. Amen. It'll cause you to have vulgar. Uh, lust for wicked thoughts, amen. You got to guard your mind. Dr. Phil can't help you. No, sir. Oprah can't help you. Amen. Anybody sit around and watch that all day? No wonder they brain dead. Amen. How am I doing? I'm trying to get done. I'm having a pretty good time on trying. Some of you look like you're in a little shock this morning, amen. This preacher here, he'll come say something. I'm just a gap filler, amen. <laughs> My brother-in-law was a preacher. This preacher down home, he'll call me every now and then when he's going on vacation or something's come up. He said, Brother Epps, uh, can you come down and, and fill in for me while I'm away or whatever the case is? And sometimes I can't. And, and I said, and I gave him my brother-in-law one time, and, and uh, he'll call my brother-in-law, let him fill in. He'll call me the A team, call my brother-in-law the B team. That kills my brother-in-law. I said, let me tell you something, Larry. Uh, hey, man, I, I'd rather be the B team. As long as I'm on the team, it don't make no difference. Uh, hey, man, just be on the team. I, I like being on the team, don't you? Uh, hey, man, uh, here, uh, you got to guard your mind. Uh, amen. Uh, you can't hardly get folks down home to come back on Sunday night. Amen. Wonder why they can't get no victory. Amen. Oh, Billy Mitchell, and I wouldn't say this. I'm just saying what Billy Mitchell said. He said, if you don't have enough God to get you back on Sunday night, probably ain't got enough God to get you to heaven. I wouldn't say that. I'm just quoting what he said. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, amen. Uncircumcised flesh. Underestimated the enemy. He thought David, he mocked David. Unguarded mind. He didn't. Bible talks about in Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord, the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For rest not not against flesh and blood, but against prince of powers, against powers, against rules of darkness of this world, against spiritual wicked high play. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand evil day. Done all to do to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth, having on the breastplate right. Feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherever shall they quench all the fire and dark to the wicked. Take the hammer of salvation of the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit watching thou for the all prayer spirit supplication all you say preach you talk too fast I ain't got much time yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. that's how I memorize them drinking Mountain Dew doing about 75 mile an hour down the end of the day. <laughs> my wife said you, you say it too quick I said they ain't listening anyhow Amen. Yeah. it just helps me but on the helmet yeah. helmet that's assurance. Help in the Sabbath. Protect your mind. Try to keep the trash out of your mind. I know some good men and friends of mine. And I know the internet's a good thing. But it can mess some people up. Well, they got curious about some things they tapped into. And they took the helmet or the guard off their mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Amen. Sometimes, you know, you battle depression as a Christian. Amen. And you, sometimes it's good to find out why you're having that. Sometimes it's because you're physically worn out and you need some rest. Sometimes it has something to do with what you, your diet and how you're eating and taking care of yourself. And sometimes it's a spiritual attack by the devil to drive you into de depression. 
as a man. And you think that out. I don't have victory over it all the time, but sometimes I, that's what I do. Maybe I just need to stop and, and go to bed for a day and get some rest and eat healthier and get me a little exercise. That Sometimes that'll snap you out of some of that. But sometimes you got to guard your mind. He likes to, you're fainting your mind. That's where he attacks. The battle goes on in my mind. That's one good thing about not having much of one like me. You don't have much to work with. Amen. Hallelujah. But amen. And well, and then not just uncircumcised flesh and underestimate the enemy, unguarded mind, but an unused sword. Amen. This is the sword of the Spirit. I don't know much about it like some people, but I know enough that I don't send Benny here no money. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. These things have been written on you. Believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Amen. If you don't read what's written, you're not going to know much. Yeah. You don't get around the right kind of preaching and Bible teaching and, and get established in the faith and the fundamentals of the faith. You'll be as confused as a termite in a yo-yo. You got to learn something about how to use this so to defend yourself yeah. Yeah. against the attacks of the devil and false religion and all this work your way to heaven and uh, outfit and amen. You got to learn that's what he did in uh, his sword. He got that giant's own sword. If folks don't use the sword, they won't get in it themselves. Amen. Amen. This King James Bible right here. Amen. It'll help you. Amen. amen. Well, uh, amen. What caused the giant to fall? Uncircumcised flesh. He underestimated the power of the enemy. Unguarded mind, unused sword. It's amazing how many folks say they've been saved for 20 years and can't quote five Bible verses. And then wonder why they don't never have no victory. I'm not trying, I'm not, a, I don't hope I don't sound like I'm being mean right there, but I'm telling you, you got to learn something about this. You may not understand it all, but you need to get a hold of some of it. Hey Amen. You need to get it in your heart. Amen. Amen. And I have the privilege, and I know because of the ministry I'm part of, I ride sometimes, and somebody said, Preacher, they try to get me to fly, and I have flew a few times. I'm, and somebody said, You afraid to fly? I said, No, I just don't want to be screaming when I die. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's right. Amen. But you know, you ride eight or ten hours a day, you know, and Chuck Swindoll just won't pull you out of deep, dark depression. <laughs> Amen. So I just put the Bible on tape or CD yeah. in there. Drink me a Mountain Dew. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Doctors say that caffeine ain't good for you. Well, they know. That's right. They say it ain't good to eat pork. Amen. I've been taking blood pressure medicine since I was in my 30s, so when I eat a lot of pork, I take an extra pill. Sure. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you ain't got to worry about a little piece of pork plugging you up. You eat as many McDonald's cheeseburgers as I eat. Yeah. You don't have to worry about a little ham clogging you up. Amen. You can feel them. You can feel them cheeseburgers hang up right in there. Just, amen. But I, I mean, I don't worry about it. They got modern medicine now, ain't they, Chick? Amen. If you get plugged up right there, they put you to sleep, take a chainsaw to your rib cage, open that thing up with a hydraulic outfit, take an artery out of your leg, say God didn't mean for it to be out anyhow, sew that thing up in your chest, put you back together. Amen. Feel pretty good from your waist up, just drag your leg around the rest of your life. Hey, they can fix all that stuff. No worry about it. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody said last night a while ago, do you eat, sleep good? I said, no, because I eat all that stuff I had over there last night. I'm telling you what, I had some real dreams last night. Amen. Amen. Some nightmares, what they were. Amen. Anyway, so much. Some of you need to grin. That'll hip you. It really will. Hey, I'm you sword. You need to. And I memorize. I just go over it. They said, boy, God's give you a gift. No, you ain't. I, I work hard on that. I'm ashamed I don't know more. I didn't start doing that until I was in my 50s. I've been saved uh, since I was 24 years old. I'm ashamed that I don't know more. Yeah. Old Milford Biddle got me hooked up on that. Oh, I go over here, Brother Biddle, boy, I mean, he's quote that whole Bible just about New Testament. Boy, convict me. He said, well, you know, he, he, God let him do it, and maybe he'll let me learn some. Yeah. And you just keep in, you, pumping your mind full of it. He'll stay with you after a while. Hey, Amen. You may not be able to draw it up, but when God wants you to have it and you need it to help you, it'll come up. Hey, Amen. It'll come up. Well, uh, uncircumcised flesh. Hey, Amen. Unestimated the power of the enemy. Unguarded mind. An unused sword. But also, he was standing on unlevel ground. 
Amen. They were on the mountain on one side, the Israelites on the other in the valley between. He's standing on shaky ground. Love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man love the world, love the Father's not him. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away in the lust of earth. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. Trying to stand on both sides. Amen. Hanging on to the world, trying to hang on to God on unlift, shaky ground. That's where that's at. Amen. Amen. You'll never get the victory till you get real faithful. God don't honor greatness. But he does honor faithfulness. Amen. Amen. You know why my marriage has worked for going on 34 years? I'm not picking on nobody. It ain't. It ain't. I found out just be a church, whatever. I don't go see no marriage counselor. I ain't went to my pastor for marriage counseling. I just do what that woman says. You don't need no counseling. God, that's the end of it. But you know, I'll kid aside. Let me just say that. I'm done. You know, uh, marriage is not a Camelot. Amen. I heard this one preacher say him and his wife been married for 50 years, never had a fuss. I said, God, he's either lying or I'm lost one. That, that's an impossibility. Amen. Amen. I ain't never won one, but I'm not giving up the fight. I fought a good fight. I'm finishing the course. I'm keeping the faith. I've told her I saw him any time when it really wasn't just for I could sleep at night. <laughs> Hey man, we promised never to go to bed mad. I've stayed up a week at a time, but I've kept my end of the deal. But you know, you have a little spat, and I know you may not, but hey man, if you're married to me, you would. <laughs> Get to church and the preacher preach, and hey man, Holy Ghost, he deal with you. Hey man, I'm trying to make a point here. This is how God. Fix it all that, keep your marriage together, learn to love one another, accept one another as you really are. That'll help you. Yes, Amen. About raising your young'uns. Yes. You can't, you can't, you can't lay out a church on Wednesday and Sunday night, go Preach play it. ball. Preach it. You need to be there. Nothing wrong with playing ball now. I'm not knocking ball. Hey man, if you like it, I just soon watch paint dry myself, but help yourself. My boy used to play ball. I used to go and hoot and holler for him like everybody else. But when he grew out of it, I got to preaching as a sin again. <laughs> hey, man, you know what I mean. <laughs> and level ground, you need, need to let them youngers know what's most important in your Amen. life. Amen. I'd rather have their names written down in the Lamb's Book of Life or their picture on a weedy box. Amen. I'm done. Amen. I'm done preaching. You cut. I just thank God for a good marriage counselor, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Man, able to counsel. Amen. That's the best advice I've heard in 53 years. Yeah. Uh, about how to maintain my home and my marriage and have my wife in subjection. Right. Uh, that's the counsel that I need. Amen. Well, we thank God for that, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. I mean, what this brother preached to us this morning is good. And it's true. It's true. Now, I believe in separation. I don't believe you ought to be worldly. I believe you ought to come out of the world and be different. God wants us to be different. 